Whoops. Karen Monroe. What is up, y'all? Hope Sunday went well for you. Yes, it actually did. Thank you for, uh, thank you for the positive wishes. Yeah, last night went really good. Thank you for, uh, for asking, or for mentioning it. Hope y'all are doing a-okay. Good evening, Christina. Let me get a uh, set up here, y'all. We do have Aries, uh, Blaze Baby. Yes, please do message me later. Let me see if I can. There we go. Something like yay. Cool. Alrighty. If we have any Aries or Taurus in the house, Aries or Taurus. Tonight is Aries and Taurus. I said Aries, sweet. You are definitely in the right place at the right time. Now, if only I can uh, keep these cards intact with the deck. Hope y'all are doing a okay tonight. Um, if y'all are new here at Free Will Tarot, definitely hit that follow button. It's greatly appreciated. If y'all like the energy I bring to the Tarot TikTok table, definitely hit that like button, maybe even a few times. Uh, if you have a an Aries or a Taurus in your life, no matter which area, definitely hit the share button. Let them know I'm about to do a general reading for them. Or no matter what zodiac sign. Alrighty. Uh, with that being said, I don't want y'all to miss out on any future readings. I do understand that everyone has their own personal life. And that things happen. Uh, so thank you for being patient with me as I'm trying to be consistent here with uh, the times I go on. 6.30pm Eastern Standard Time to 8.30. If you aren't an Aries or a Taurus... Definitely check out the schedule right here in the bottom right corner. With that being said, we are going to get right on into the Aries reading. Oh, yes, uh, my YouTube channel, the link to my YouTube channel is in my TikTok bio for anyone that is curious. I know not everyone, not every time will make it to the live stream. That is why I upload these live streams to my YouTube channel. Alrighty. Um, I think that's all for now. I will mention the personal readings about halfway through the Aries reading and then halfway through the Taurus reading. Uh, but for now, we will just dive on in to the bridge shuffle. All right, one, a two. A three. All right, folks, here is the bridge shuffle. If you are new here, the bridge shuffle is when I show you the shuffle. Right here. And that is the green light to send me scissors or anything sharp and pointy of the emoji variety. I'm sure my OG followers know what to do and don't need me to... Uh, be repetitive, but hey, I'm sure you also understand why I have to be repetitive for any new followers out there. Alrighty. So folks, I am using the Dragon Tarot. At least for uh, the next week. This might be my last week I'm using this deck. Uh, followed by the Dragon Tarot as well. To close out the Aries reading and the Taurus reading. Both dragon tarot decks because this is 2024, the year of the dragon. 
Alrighty, and then I'm going to have to put these decks away after this next week. After, yeah, this week of using them. Uh, but with that being said, we are going to pull out some dice and roll for the overall topic and or theme for the Aries reading. Alright, Aries. What we have for Aries, overall theme and or topic for you, Aries. Woo! All right, let's try that again. We had one fall off the table. Give it a good blow, right? We have a one and a two. So Aries. It definitely could be a good indication that we have new beginnings with the number one being rolled and then two being harmony, opposites uniting or coming into union or something balancing out for you. Maybe this is a new beginning that feels very harmonious or a new beginning in the sense of opposites uniting or coming into balance of sorts. All right. Um, I think that's what I have for the dice roll, though. Let us go ahead and cut the deck. Thank you all for interacting with me in the comments. Uh, one more time, hit that follow button if you have not done so. Uh, for any of the Tauruses out there, thank you for being patient with me. Your reading will be in about 50 minutes or so. 50 minutes, okay? Um, yes, hit that like button maybe a few times if you like the energy I bring to the Tarot TikTok table. Maybe even share with an Aries or a Taurus, no matter what area of your life. All right, let us begin. Let us. Let us begin. The Aries reading, Sun, Moon, and or Rising. Maybe even Venus for Aries. Here we go. Here is your energy. Here is the challenge. Okay. Here is your person's energy. Here is the common ground or similarities between you both. And here is the possible outcome and or advice. Alrighty. So Aries, we do have five cards here on the tarot TikTok table. <laughs> here in about uh, 20, 21, 21 minutes, 22 minutes, give or take. We will clarify with five more cards, one card per each placement. Um, and then we will recap in that 20, 21, 22 minutes. For anyone new joining the live stream or for anyone that just so happened to miss out on that half of the reading. How was the rest of your live personal readings last night? Uh, my personal readings I did last night that I offered for the very first time went super well, I think. Um, I think I might have to do some adjusting and my moderator does have some ideas of how to do that. I will get with her after the live stream. Okay, I think most of that was either Aries showing up and confirming they're here or emojis. So, all right, let us uh, get into this reading, shall we, Aries? So we do have the Five of Cups. We do have the Five of Cups and your energy. This could tell me that you're either focusing more so on the negative aspects of this relationship or possibly crying over spilled milk. I don't know if it is you that feel ashamed of allowing this person in your energy or it's maybe you said or did something that maybe offended this person, which if that's the case, uh, maybe they needed a bit of truth. Um, but was that necessarily your obligation to tell this person the truth? Possibly. Possibly. Um, whether or not it is it is that they were offended by something you said or something you did, um, this person could have reacted in such a way that has you crying over spilled milk and or ashamed or you know, feeling guilty for something or grieving a loss of some sort with this individual. The Five of Cups is an energy or a card that specifically explains, let's say, looking at what's been spilt, what's been lost in this uh, situation or in this relationship, let's say, and not really looking behind you or in your environment about all the blessings you still have, all the manifestations that are still coming in and setting into the 3D. Um, 
you know, needing to be reminded that you still have people that love you, no matter if you are meant to be with this person or if it's going to be an uphill struggle with this person to, you know, get this relationship off the ground running or to make it a healthy and happy relationship in general. Okay, we do have the lovers in the challenge. Yeah, it definitely feels like this is a disconnect. Maybe a decision was not made either on your part or their part. Uh, maybe that's why you're in this Five of Cups energy, feeling either ashamed or in regret. Um, I don't want to feel like it's a missed opportunity per se. I feel like maybe this was something you either... Uh, made a decision about like, yes, let's move this forward. And then this person possibly didn't reciprocate or didn't um, take the right actions and then left you embarrassed possibly. Is that what this is? Be embarrassed? This is a, the sign of Aries. Um, yeah, I do feel with the Five of Cups, you might be a little bit embarrassed, Aries. You know, about this uh, this disconnect. Or maybe the wrong timing to make a decision to take action to maybe communicate to this person or um, you waited too long to make a decision or to communicate to this person and that lack of uh, that lack of a decision being made possibly disconnected you too they said child please <laughs> said yep Aries which sign is this it is Aries it's me I'm ashamed oh goodness he said, child, please. <laughs> we do have the high priestess and this person's energy. The high priestess telling me that, yeah, they definitely could be quiet at this time. Uh, keeping quiet. I don't know about being secretive, per se. They're trying to decipher the difference between their intuition and their ego. Obviously, if they are, or not so obvious... If they are listening to their intuition, their intuition will tell them, hey, the Aries is someone safe. The Aries wants something with you. The Aries does not want to be embarrassed. So it might be that you need to take action. Uh, I'm saying that to this person as if maybe we have a cross watcher for the Aries. No matter if we do have a cross watcher for Aries or not. I do feel like this person is being silent, as I mentioned. They are trying to get out of their own way. You know, is it their intuition telling them that, hey, it's safe to invest in Aries? Or is it their intuition of uh, that's saying to them, no, you know, this relationship won't work out because of A, B, C, or whatever the pros and cons this person might be, um, you know, weighing up or trying to make this decision based upon. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What is going on in this reading? I really didn't look at this uh, these cards. Aries, what is going on? I said, yes, I'm dating an Aries. All right. Silence is key. Got tired of fighting his assumptions. Well, I mean, you know what they say about uh, people, you know, assuming the worst out of us. Oh, Aries, you're just going to cheat on me. Or Aries, you're just going to leave me. You just have bad intentions for me. You don't have my best intentions at heart. Okay. The more you speak that into existence, the more it's going to come true. You know, I don't know if this person is using their intuition in the sense of trying to uncover that the truth was the whole time that Aries possibly had good intentions towards them and that this person lost out on a good person being the Aries. Or, I mean... Depending on what we clarify uh, with the high priestess, it very well could be that this person is listening to their ego, you know, which is telling them, no, it's not safe. It's not safe. Don't invest in this person. Listen to your ego. Your ego, you know, is not going to betray you, which that's a lie. Especially if uh, the Aries is healed enough to not only trust themselves, but to trust this person, you know? Uh, but I do feel like this person may or may not have some trust issues and or, uh, I mean, we did have confirmation from someone in the comments saying that 
they're either pushing the Aries away or uh, assuming the worst out of the Aries, and it's like, no, this person could be listening to their ego, and that's why you're they're uh, pushing you away. You know, I don't feel like this person trusts themselves. That is why they are trying to decipher the difference between their ego and their intuition. You know, th this person can trust themselves if they allow themselves to. But if they let their ego get in the way, um, it could be that they did, yes, end up pushing you away. Uh, with the Eight of Cups and the similarities are common ground. This is like triple confirmation that this is an emotional mess that you and this person have created. I don't know if you yourself are trying to forgive this person and take accountability for how you created a part of this mess. Yes, it takes two to tango, folks. You know? But the good news is, as long as we can forgive ourselves and forgive this person, uh, maybe the Aries is telling themselves, this person doesn't uh, does not know what they are missing out on. This person does not know what they are doing. You know, that's uh, the, the whole saying, forgive them, God, forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they do. You might be, uh, you know, praying right about now or right about now saying just that. Forgive them for they do not know what they do. Uh, Eight of Cups, though, it does tell me that this is a situation where both of you have created possibly an emotional mess, and maybe one or both of you are taking accountability. For all I know, neither of you could be. You know, I'll let you decide that for yourself. Yes, I allowed this person to push me away. I allowed them in my space. I allowed them the chance, you know, to... Uh, take up my love, and then either accept it or throw it away. You know, to either drink from my cup of love or to pour it out and spill it all over the ground. Here is, here is the knife, says the Aries. You know where to stick it. You can either stick it where it needs to be stuck or you can put it in your back pocket and protect me with that knife. You know, and be protective over the energy and opportunities I am giving you with my heart. You know, but neither here nor there. This is, like I mentioned a few times, a situation where there is a, an emotional mess. There is emotional dissatisfaction and you both are wanting to emotionally detach and or walk away from each other. Um, we will get a deeper look into why that is. Um... We do have double eights now. This is the possible outcome or the advice. Eight of swords. This kind of, uh, I don't know if the right word is collaborate. I'm going to use it anyways. And if y'all want to correct me, awesome. Uh, do not belittle me if I use the wrong word in the wrong context. Just educate me. That's all I ask. We do have, yes, the eight of swords. Uh, this could collaborate or co collaborate, whatever the word is. This could uh, be an indication, let's say that, that maybe there is, if this is the possible outcome with the Eight of Swords, maybe there is a chance that you're going to end up uh, playing the victim in this outcome. You know, crying over spilled milk, more so paying attention and giving your energy to the negative aspects of this relationship, this dynamic between you both. You know, look at all the negative. Look at the emotional mess that we have to walk away from. I don't want to take accountability, possibly. So I might be uh, playing victim and or overthinking and or feeling trapped like, what do I do? How do I solve this? How do I fix this? <clears throat> How do I get this person to maybe listen to their intuition, which would tell them to, yes, trust the Aries. They have good intentions. Um, if this is the advice, though, I would suggest not overthinking it. I would suggest speaking to yourself in a manner where you can accept the truth that, yes, it took two to tango. If this person wasn't doing the work on themselves to either soul search or reflect 
on how, you know, uh, they could possibly self-sabotage this with you, or if they didn't do the work to heal a trust issue, then that is on this person. That is on this person to take accountability for, yeah, I probably should have done a little more work on myself, you know, before connecting with the Aries or investing my time, money, energy, effort into the Aries. But that is not your problem. Uh, your problem here, or your solution, actually, to the problem, is to not overthink the situation, to be more so grateful that this person taught you something about yourself. You know, maybe, maybe this person opened up your heart space just so that you can attract what you actually want. You know, once we focus on what we actually want, the solution, rather than focusing on what we don't want, you know, which only gives us more problems, we will attract more solutions. We will attract more of what we want. The more we focus that energy, you know, and water those plants. Uh, almost as if saying this person has watered their ego, possibly, instead of watering their intuition and practicing and or um, exercising that intuition, as maybe the Aries has done. But yes, this is not happening to you if you are in victim mentality. This is not happening to you. No way, Jose. No way, Jose. This is happening for you. And the next month, you will see. In the next six months, not only will you see in the next six months, but in the next six months, you will look back and possibly laugh at this encounter with this person. Like, I'm so glad that happened. It taught me this, this, and that, which led me to this, this, and that. Example being possibly a newer relationship in the next month to six months. I do feel like maybe this person was... Uh, to either teach you a lesson that you've already learned or teach you a lesson that maybe you needed to learn before going into a new relationship that you possibly are about to manifest. Uh, keep in mind that as long as we keep our focus, you know, on that positive relationship, we're still manifesting. Maybe outside this person, maybe even with this person, for all I know, you know, then we will attract that eventually. Alrighty, that is what I have for the Aries for the first half of your reading. We are going to clarify and get a deeper look into why is it that you're, I mean, we know why. I, I went through the whole connection of every card, you know, in every combination. Mm. But in general, why is it that maybe you're possibly focusing more so on the negative aspects of this relationship. Why is there a disconnect with the lovers in the challenge? Or is it that maybe there wasn't a decision being made and maybe you regret not making a decision? Or maybe you regret making a decision too fast? We will get a deeper look into that lover's card in the challenge. We'll also get a look at, is this person listening to their intuition or practicing that? Or is this person more so in their ego saying, nah, I'm going to stay in my comfort zone. The Aries pushes me too far in my comfort zone, you know, and it could be that all you wanted was the bare minimum, but this person could be, uh, you know, still dealing with trust issues, not wanting to look at those wounds, possibly, and stuck in their ego, at least for the time being in the next week as I do weekly readings. Why is it that maybe you and this person are giving up on this connection already? Are either one of you taking accountability for how this yes is an emotional mess and that it yes takes two to tango in creating this emotional mess? And why is it that maybe your advice is to not overthink this? Um, that would be easy to answer. Uh, even if we kept this at a five card spread, but maybe this is the possible outcome that you'll end up overthinking it, maybe being in victim mentality. You know, this is their fault. Their trust issues. They're this, they're that. Yes. But once again, it's all about accountability. Did you allow this person and their trust issues to get the best of you to, you know, 
whatever the case, whatever the example, we are going to get a deeper look into it. All right, if y'all are new here, definitely hit that follow button. It is greatly appreciated. I'm actually like super de duper close, like 60 more followers to 7,000 followers. That is freaking insane. And also I'm like super close to the, uh, the start date. Last year I started out doing TikTok videos, like 10, 10 minute limit uh, videos at March 13th. Yeah, on exactly the date of March 13th. And I did videos, 12 videos a day. One video for each zodiac sign, 12 zodiac sign videos a day for a whole month. And I worked my butt off to, you know, improve my communication skills, improve on my delivery, you know, improve on uh, connecting the cards within the reading. And I do feel like it has helped me and yeah, tremendously. Um, but yeah, this coming March will set the uh, one year anniversary for me being here on TikTok. Isn't that insane? Fly uh, time flies. Time flies. Uh, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. If y'all are new here, hit that follow button, please and thank you. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Uh, if y'all like the energy I bring to the tarot TikTok table, definitely hit that like button. Um, uh-oh. Yeah, thank you all so much for the love and support. Like, throughout this whole last year, it's it's been a crazy ride, um, and I put in so much work. Um, you know, I think I've, in the last month or last week or two, have only paid, like, $11 for a coupon, or I used a coupon during one, one for one of my videos. It's, uh, it's an Aries. It's actually an Aries video that I... Uh, you know, use the coupon on, and I spent like $11 and some cents to, you know, help promote that video. It's at like 6,000 views now. 6,000? That sounds about right. Six 6,000? Something like that. Yeah. So, definitely go ahead and check that video out uh, in my TikTok account when you get the chance, and see if around that time it uh, either resonated and or was accurate or you can relate to that reading at that time, around a year ago from March 13th. Um, I'm sure it's going to take a lot of time to even find it on my account, so I don't blame y'all if y'all don't want to even, you know, uh, what? No, that was the last one I did Halloween. I'm thinking March 13th to go. Yeah, the last video I had around Halloween is the one I'm speaking of, but any hoosers, not to confuse y'all, but hey, maybe y'all want to share this live stream with a fellow Aries or maybe even a Taurus. Let the Taurus know that their reading will be in a half hour, all right? And one time for the one time, I have started as of last night, the first Sunday here on Free Will Tarot offering personal readings, <clears throat> uh, $20 each, uh, Five dollars for a yes and no question, and it was pretty successful. I do think I did nine or ten readings last night, and that was I thought it was successful. Maybe someone out there disagrees, uh, but neither here nor there. I still have some adjusting to do. But yes, Aries, thank you all for showing up tonight. We're going to clarify. It is seven o'clock here in Ohio. I did just notice that. And 77, well now 76, but at the time I seen it was 77 viewers. It said, did I do Pisces already? Yes. As you can see on the banner here, two zodiac signs a night. Two zodiac signs a night. Uh, Pisces just so happens to be the last one in line, being Saturday nights, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Alrighty. I hope that answered your question. My intentions with him were to see if I could feel love again and I did that is amazing that's beautiful I love that they said it was awesome loved it yeah welcome back Domi I was a part of that and loved it sweet I forwarded your page to a few they said pin it <laughs> let's get him to 10,000 likes y'all are too y'all are too awesome I love how loyal all my uh, followers are sending love and light and many blessings to you as well has he done Taurus? No, that will be in about 
a half hour. Thank you for being patient with me. All right, uh, Aries, we're just going to get right on into this reading. Can't wait for next Sunday. Awesome sauce. I ain't cleaning it up, though. Awesome sauce everywhere. All righty. About... Uh, let's just do it. Let's just do it. One, two, and three. All right. Y'all, if you're new here, when I do the bridge shuffle, which I'm about to do the second and last bridge shuffle for all the Aries out there, right there, that is the green light to send me scissors or anything sharp and pointy. That way I can cut this deck. Yep, that's the name of the game. You send me scissors, I cut this deck. And then we clarify the Aries reading. Y'all. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of growth, you know, here on my TikTok account, and I, I couldn't be happier. Thank you all for uh, everyone that showed up to last night's uh, personal readings. I do hope uh, they either were helpful or informative or insightful even. Uh, that was that was a beautiful moment for me. Thank you for investing your time in that moment. For real. I'm going to get a quick drink. And then a quick icebreaker to break the ice. And then a quick icebreaker to break the ice. Go ahead and cut it. It said, what was that last one? I was away. Okay, uh, come back when you're ready. But yes, we are going to cut the deck now. Thank you all for not only being patient with me, but also interacting with me in the comments. Here we go. Aries, you froze for a second. Am I still frozen? Am I still frozen? Did y'all happen to check it out if I got frozen or not? I'm not frozen? Okay, if, if it freezes up again on you, you might have to exit out, the, uh, exit out of the app. They said, no, it's good now. Okay, I had to leave and come back. All right. No, but it happened twice. All right. Yeah, if, uh, oh, okay. All right, here we go clarifying the Aries reading for none other than the Aries zodiac sign collective uh, whatever placement in your chart sun moon and or rising maybe even Venus here we go Aries clarifying the five of cups in your energy clarifying the lovers and the challenge clarifying the high priestess in this person's energy clarifying the eight of cups yeah that's kind of uh, Captain Obvious there. And the uh, similarities are common ground between you both. And clarifying the Eight of Swords and the possible outcome and or advice. Hmm. Hmm. All right, Aries. So, recapping. 1K. More likes to go. Sweet. Um, I normally don't even pay attention to the likes, like how many likes I have. I, I pay more attention to how many viewers I have. I think the most I've had was almost 200 folks. That was pretty, uh, that was pretty eventful for me. But yeah, I don't necessarily pay attention to the likes, but y'all are more than welcome to hit the like button maybe a few times. Um, the Five of Cups, though. To recap for any new Aries or for any of the Aries that joined me in the last half hour, Five of Cups, it definitely could be that you're paying more attention to and or putting your focus towards the negative aspects of this relationship. Which, who can blame you? It's so easy to do that. It's so easy to fall into that that uh, vibrational, you know, uh, that vibration. I'll say that much. The lower vibration, if you will, of guilt or shame or grief let's say it's so easy to just want to grieve especially if you put investment into it you put energy money time you know no one likes to waste their time that's that's a valuable resource that you can't get back so i i can't blame you there you know but at the same time 
you still have people that love you. You still have manifestations wanting to come in and rest in here in the 3D. You still have not only blessings in the sense that people love you, but you have shoes on your feet, a shirt on your back, food in your stomach, possibly. You know, and if not now, I'm sure you might in the next hour or two or whenever you'll eat next time, you know? Uh, and the next time you do eat, uh, be sure to, you know, thank your food and say, I love you, food. And to be grateful for it, you know, because not everyone has that chance. You know, be grateful for the things you have. Uh, this is like probably the saddest card in my opinion, the Five of Cups, you know, because yes, while someone, while you yourself, Aries, are looking at your life like, man, look at all this loss, look at all this negativity, look at this, look at that, like it's, it's not good enough, it's not, you know, or maybe you are ashamed about something that you did or said towards this person, you know, we all make mistakes though, um, I do feel like that is the saddest part about this card though, is while we are wishing, you know, we had something better for our own lives, someone is looking at your life, Aries, and wishing that they had it, you know? I do find that that is a, a, a beautiful interpretation of the Five of Cups. We do have the Two of Coins though, telling me, uh, clarifying the Five of Cups, that maybe um, you're wanting to weigh up the pros and cons about fixing this. I don't know if this is uh, you, Aries, being either ashamed or feeling guilty for either saying something or not saying something or doing something or not doing something either too soon or too late. No matter the example, it could tell me, two of coins, that maybe you was just too busy, you know, juggling responsibilities. This could scream to me, yes. I feel guilty or I feel ashamed because I juggled so many responsibilities and did not prioritize this person as, as often as, as I should have. Yes, feeling guilty and or ashamed and or embarrassed that I juggled responsibilities instead of prioritizing this person. That's a beautiful interpretation of these two cards, this pairing of cards together. Um, it could be also that you took too much time to weigh up the pros and cons. Should I stay or should I go now? Should I stay or should I go now, says the Aries. You know, well, I've got all the time in the world. I've got all the time in the world. Why not take my time in weighing up the pros and cons? But it's like, well, do you though? You know, do you? We, we often would like to think we have all the time in the world to weigh up pros and cons and make a decision. But sometimes not making a decision is a decision and you wind up having this person thinking that you are wasting their time. I do want to mention that. Uh, we do have the lovers in the challenge. The lovers in the challenge, when I see a card in the challenge in general, I try to interpret it as a reversal interpretation. Or I try to read it as, an, as a uh, reversal, let's say. So yes, the lovers, I'm just going to come out and say it. Uh, screw my time management. I think I'm good on time. We do have the four of wands clarifying the lovers and the challenge this whole relationship has gone upside down it's it's a reversal in itself this relationship is a metaphoric reversal no pun intended when i'm talking about you know a tarot reading and interpretations either being up upright or you know reversals whatever the case it does feel like this is a disconnect you know uh the lovers it's possibly a deep magnetic pull you have with someone that maybe you didn't make that decision with uh, the deeper meaning and or interpretation of the lover's meaning, needing to make a choice, needing to make a decision. That in the challenge, maybe you find it challenging to make that decision. Make that decision to level up, to prepare for a celebration of stability in this relationship with the Four of Wands. Uh, did you not make a decision about someone's proposal? 
Did someone ask for your hand in marriage, Aries? Or did you ask this person for their hand in marriage? And they either turned you down or you turned them down? Either way, that can be very embarrassing. That can be very embarrassing. I don't think it's, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep my mouth shut when it comes to that. Um, I was almost going to mention something about that could be very, uh, you know, seem like a rejection of sorts. And yeah, I did. We do have the three of swords in this reading. I'm going to warn you right here and now, um, you know, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut until we get there. But yeah, not making a decision about leveling up this connection about celebrating the stability and or preparing the stability for this relationship so it can last for the long term. We do have, yeah, the high priestess in this person's energy telling me that they are trying to decipher what to do with the Aries. You know, if they listen to their, uh, their ego, it's going to tell them, no, stay here in your comfort zone where it's safe. You know, do not invest your time, money, energy, effort into the Aries. I don't know if it's this person that offered a proposal of marriage to you or wanted to take you out on a date or wanted to make it Facebook official or whatever social media you both use. Um, I do feel like there is a metaphoric crossroad that this person is at, though. Usually when I see the two of wands, I say, do I go right where nothing's left or do I go left where nothing's right? But in this case, clarifying the high priestess, it's more so, do I listen to the devil on my shoulder being the ego, or do I listen to the angel on my other shoulder being the intuition? I don't know where this person is, is going with the two of wands, but they want to plan for the future, and it's either got to be with or without you. There's no in-between. You know, they can't have their cake and eat it too. And have the Aries and a Taurus and a Gemini and a Cancer and a Leo. You know what I'm saying? They, they can't have their cake and eat it too. It, it's just not how that works. Or at least not by societal's norms. Um, you know what I mean? They do want to yes plan for the future with the Two of Wands. But they're trying to decipher which path to take. Going down the path of the ego is going to make them probably regret not investing in the Aries. Or... Um, investing in them, listening to their intuition could also be a bad decision. Keep in mind, you know, we weigh up pros and cons, not of just investing, but in not investing. You know, there's a pro in investing. Sure, there's going to be good memories, but there's also cons in investing. You know, is this person going to take all my money, take my house, take my car, take my kids? You know, there's pros and cons on both making a decision and not making a decision. Uh, we do have two cards then. Two of coins on your end and two of wands on this person's end. That does tell me that yes, both of you are trying to make a decision. But at this time, with the lovers being in the challenge, it's like, are you? Are you? Are you going to reconnect? You know, are you both going to get on the same page, collaborate, you know, have those tough conversations? <clears throat> uh, possibly not, because we have the Eight of Cups, and the similarities are common ground. This could tell me that you both want to emotionally detach, because there is an emotional mess that's been created between you both. I don't know to what extent, if there's yelling, or screaming, or disagreements, uh, you know, disagreements, arguments, miscommunication, misunderstanding. Um, but it's all because three of swords, as I mentioned earlier, there's heartbreak felt on both ends, <clears throat> on both ends. I will say yes, this is the common ground and similarities. So yes, both of you simultaneously, maybe for different reasons, I'm sure, you know, I'm not sure, or, no, okay, I am sure that it is for different reasons, and I'm also sure that uh, y'all will know the reasons. 
I think you're more so emotional over this person. Maybe even trying to distract yourself with possible, uh, you know, juggling responsibilities. You know, not wanting to look at the pain, not wanting to look at the negative aspects. He said, hey, Rickster. Hello, user Finch girl. Um, and then we do have this person that doesn't want to, you know, make the wrong decision with their ego. But also, is their ego correct and telling them not to invest in the Aries? I'm not sure. That's what this person is trying to find out, though. You know, and they definitely want to make plans either with or without you. But no matter if it's with or without you, such as the two of coins suggests, weighing up the pros and cons, uh, there is pros to both investing or not investing, making that decision or not making that decision, but there's also cons, you know, in investing or not investing, making that decision, not making that decision. No one wants to make the wrong decision, and even if we make a mistake, you know, we can always restart again and learn that lesson, you know? We can take what we've learned moving forward and correct it as we go. Um, but yes, Eight of Cups to the Three of Swords. This tells me that yes, possibly uh, you both want to emotionally detach, emotionally walk away, that maybe... To some extent, there was screaming, yelling, disagreements, misunderstandings, arguments, whatever, you know, but are you taking accountability? Is this person taking accountability for how you both played a part in creating this mess? If you are, I salute you because that has a lot to do with forgiveness. You know, if you can forgive yourself and take that accountability for allowing this person in your space, and then signing that contract, yes, I am signing my heart away so that I could possibly feel that heartbreak, you know? But then a lot of us want to take it back like, no, I didn't sign that imaginary contract. I didn't sign that verbal contract, that energetic contract, you know? And if we're not taking accountability, then how can we rest? How can we heal? Um, which... Resting, healing, has a lot to do with the Four of Swords, the next card after the Three of Swords. We don't have that card in this reading, but I did want to mention that. I am, but he isn't. He's blaming me. Okay, well, I do want to mention then, uh, first off, I do want to mention that, yes, Three of Swords is a temporary heartbreak. It's not as if this person has betrayed you. I'm sure it is for some of you, but this card tells me that that's not the case. I'm not sure if it was an abandonment. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, he lied or you lied or the truth was omitted. You know, lied by omission, let's say. But the Three of Swords does tell me that this is a temporary heartbreak. That this isn't something that you have to necessarily fixate on, per se. That yes, it is your negative thoughts on the situation affecting your heart space. These swords representing our thoughts, our communication. You know, so do be careful about uh, how you speak about this person, how you speak about yourself, you know, because that affects your manifestations that come through our heart space. What we think affects our feelings. Our feelings are what push forth what we want and desire, our desires into the universe, you know, calling forth what we desire, let's say. And then our energetic bubble pulls in little bits of that manifestation, let's say. Now, I did want to mention earlier, but then got uh, caught up on the Three of Swords. I did want to mention earlier that, yes, if you are in this Eight of Swords uh, energy, or if this is the possible outcome, that you are either overthinking or feeling trapped you know, feeling guilty, gaslighting yourself, possibly. I would not play this person's game if they are blaming you. The blame game is a one-person game. It's me. I signed that contract, that energetic contract to either, you know, gain a magnetic relationship, a deep magnetic relationship or pairing between you both, 
or to lose out on it and feel heartbreak. It is I that is to blame. You know, if we can forgive ourselves, that's all that matters. We can forgive this person as well, but we have to forgive ourselves first. You know, that's where it starts. Um, I do feel like if that is the advice, yes, try your best not to overthink this ending. Uh, maybe even uh, not to overthink, you know, this rejection. Especially if this is a rejection, because if this is a rejection or an outcasting uh, to whatever degree, that this is God's plan. God, the universe, your intuition will redirect you where you are most needed. If it's with this person, awesome. Then you guys, you and this person will get over that hump. But if not, then so be it, you know, so be it. There's someone better suited for you where maybe it's more natural and you don't have to feel like you're always disconnected with them or having a disconnect to some degree or feeling rejected, you know, or feeling ashamed or embarrassed, you know, making you forget that you still have loved ones that love you, that you still have blessings. If this person unintentionally, I'm sure, is making you forget all that, then they quite possibly might not even be the one, you know? Um, also, with the Ace of Swords, clarifying the Eight of Swords, try your best to not overthink it, to maybe try to come up with a new way of communicating with this person. Possibly. The Ace of Swords is possible, is potential, New beginnings and communication, maybe a belief system, maybe a new idea, a eureka moment, an aha moment, uh, or it could be clarity. This could be the truth, you know, possibly not to overthink the situation because you know the truth, possibly not to overthink the situation and or not to play the victim or be in victim mentality because you know the truth. You're not the victim in the situation. You know that in six months, you'll be laughing at the situation. You'll be healed, fully healed. And if not in six months, uh, maybe a year's time. You know? I do feel like that is the truth that maybe you need to bring to your own awareness. Or this is communication that you need to bring to this person. Like, hey, yeah, we're both uh, heartbroken over this now. But we can find a new form of communication to get through this. If that is both of y'all's intentions. You know, and if it's not, then try your best not to play this person's blame game. Because they will probably, not only in the next week, but weeks to come, if they still remain in that energy of playing blame game, they're going to try to get you to play with them. You know, to be a uh, two-player a two game, a two player game. That's it. Yeah, they're going to try to invite you into their, uh, you know, their. I'm I'm trying to come up with a uh, a witty, a gamer. Um, joke, but I got nothing. I'm not a gamer per se. Try to invite you to their game, you know, to uh, be a two player game in the blame game, uh, but that's not the case. I would say reject that invite to play the blame game because you know that yes you are at fault and uh you don't need this person to point that out to you you know i'm not even sure if it would be uh what necessary for this person to point that out in you or if it's like tough love on their end you know of their perspective let's say but no matter the case it should be our own our own duty our own obligations to point out, yes, I did this wrong. Yes, I did this incorrectly. Yes, I could have done more of this. I will work on that my next chance I get, either in my next relationship or in my family dynamics, in my friends you know, group, in uh, my dynamics with my coworkers, maybe. I will try my best to take accountability in my other relationships. That way I can have better practice 
with other relationships uh, romantically. I do feel like platonic relationships can be good practice to either improve upon, you know, accountability for sure. Accountability for sure. So uh, with that being said, Aries, I think that's what I have for y'all. I hope this helped. I hope this was uh, insightful, maybe even informative. I'm sure it wasn't necessarily too entertaining. I definitely wouldn't want to wish this reading on one of my friends or family members or coworkers. But hey, if it does relate and or resonate for your you know, life that is going on possibly currently or in the next week, um, I do hope this helped. They said you missed it. What was said about Aries? Uh, I only have three minutes left. I, I, I don't think I would be able to do that in three minutes. Um, but no matter the case, I hope you have subscribed to my YouTube channel. Yes, watch it on... Uh, yes, I do hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will get this uploaded uh, to my YouTube channel. The link is in my bio, my TikTok bio. In case you were wondering. Um, and then, yeah, you might have to press and hold on my link. On the YouTube link. And then copy and paste where you need to. But, uh, yes, I, I try to stay consistent here. And about an hour ago, uh, Aries, about an hour ago is when I go live. Every night. So no matter what time it is, where you are located where you live currently. I live in Ohio, so it is now 728 in Ohio. Uh, no matter what time it is where you live though, subtract an hour from that and set an alarm please and thank you. Um, as I've mentioned many times before, I don't want y'all to miss out on live stream, but I do understand that life happens. Therefore, yes, maybe you wanna set an alarm or maybe you want to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel you know, turn on the notifications there, and then you won't miss out on any live streams. Alrighty? With that being said, I have to, have to, have to start up the Taurus reading. Two hours for West Coast. Okay. <clears throat> Taurus. Oh, yes, Aries. One more time, Aries. Uh, hit that follow button if you have not done so. They said, thank you. Not a problem. Um, yes, Aries, hit that follow button if you have not done so. Hit the like button, possibly. And uh, share this with maybe another Taurus that you have in your life, especially if they have the TikTok app, especially if they love tarot as much as you, as much as me, maybe even more. Um... I suppose... I need to say the same for Taurus, right? Taurus, hit that follow button if you have not done so, especially if you're new here. If any of the Tauruses have been watching and you like the energy I bring to the tarot TikTok table, then go ahead and hit that like button maybe a few times. Or share this with a Taurus, or no matter the zodiac sign, maybe you know someone who is dealing with a Taurus and they themselves have TikTok. You know, definitely give it a share. Hit the share button if that is the case. Alrighty. Alrighty. Taurus, thank you all so, uh, so much for being patient with me. They said, I'm dealing with the Taurus, LOL. Hey, that is awesome sauce everywhere. But I ain't cleaning it up. I ain't cleaning it up, no. I ain't cleaning it up. I ain't cleaning it up, no. I don't know what that was, but hey, it sounded bluesy. It sounded pretty neat, bluesy. <laughs> I am the Taurus. This is Sparta. <laughs> Jackie said, hey. Jackie says, hey. Seems so innocent. I am the Taurus. This is Sparta. I don't know what my deal is tonight, y'all, but I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood.
that was no pun intended, I promise, uh, considering I am dealing with uh, the Taurus bowls out there. I'm in a good mood. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Don't cancel me, please. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Everyone, watch out for Ricky's on crack tonight. No, I promise. I'm just drinking root beer. I'm all cracked out on root beer. A little bit of the hair of the dog that bit me. Maybe more root beer will help. Yes, more sugar, Rick. That's the ticket. Feeling tourist vibe. Is that right? Coming from a, a lying Leo. Ba-doom, <laughs> you ain't lying. You ain't lying. Big stubborn Taurus, smarty pants. But no, we love when you're happy and being authentically awesome. Thank you so much. You don't want the horns. <laughs> no, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> Blaze Baby said, wow. Coming from a lion, Leo. That's great to hear. Ha ha ha, I am Taurus. Ha ha ha. Go with it. I just may. I just may. All right, much love to y'all. Thank you for uh, all the support and being patient with me as I make a fool of myself. I cannot wait for the world of YouTube to watch me make a fool of myself and make terrible dad jokes about, you know, how good of a mood I am to all the Tauruses. Look out, YouTube world. Here I come. Goodness gracious. All right, yeah, thank you all for being patient with me. For reals, though. For reals. For show. You know. All right. Taurus, that was the last card I needed to shuffle. Shuffle. As they say in France, shuffle. I don't know. I don't, I don't speak French. Uh-oh. Live age restricted. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that means. It said live age restriction. What does that mean? Someone tell me. Do I have uh, someone under age watching me? Sh uh, should I watch my mouth more than usual? <laughs> Someone young in here. Kick them out. Everyone else would disagree with me. Uh oh, what, what are you saying? That they would disagree with you. Did they do Taurus? No, I'm about to. They said, not this bowl. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. We are not stubborn. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not prideful. They said, I don't see them. It's me. I'm the young... Just kidding. Oh, goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I'm not prideful. I'm also uh, not the most handsome of the Zodiac, being a Leo. Duh. No, I'm just kidding. JK. Capital J, capital K. I'm very flawed and sometimes insecure. They said, yeah, right, Rick. <laughs> uh, quit it, folks. It is now 36 after. That means it is time for the bread shuffle. Thank you all for being patient with me and for chillaxing with me. Here we go. Bread shuffle time. Bridge Shuffle time. All right, that was the Bridge Shuffle. If any of you new folks are here, yes, if you, any of you folks are new here, 
if any of you, uh, if any of the Tauruses are new here, or any new followers out there, when I do the bridge shuffle, that is the green light to send me scissors in the comments, or anything sharp and pointy of the emoji variety, so that I may cut this deck. Y'all get the gist. Uh, especially if you're not new here at Free Will Tarot. Um, but once more time, for anyone new here, I will be rolling the dice to get an overall topic and or theme for the Taurus reading. Thank you all, Taurus Collective and or followers of mine for jumping into the live stream and either just chilling out with me or getting a peek of what I do here. Here we go. Taurus, what is the overall theme and or topic for you for this reading for the next week? We do have a four and a five, meaning home, foundation for four, and then for five, change, conflict, and stability. So it could be something to do with the home, some sort of change that you are currently making on purpose, intentionally, and or trying to implicate, implicate? Yes. <laughs> or... It could be a conflict within the home or a foundation you are creating, possibly a foundation of a relationship you're creating, um, or a foundation that either needs change or is uh, maybe you and this person are implementing that change in this foundation of a relationship that you could be building upon. Like I said, it, there could be a conflict between you both, maybe an inner conflict, maybe an outer conflict, maybe there's an instability an energy of instability, maybe a, you know, mental instability, maybe physical instability, maybe a financial instability, that very well could be. Instability of the financial variety. All right, um, let's see here, 38 after. Thank you all folks for interacting with me in the comments. One more time, hit that follow button, hit that like button, hit that share button. Especially if you're new, especially if you like the energy I bring to the tarot TikTok table. That's uh, my disco theme song. And especially if you have a Taurus anywhere in your life. Friend, family member, coworker, maybe even a nosy neighbor. I do recall last week some of the Tauruses uh, volunteering that yes, they are the nosy neighbors. Maybe some of you. No matter the case. Here we go, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and or Rising, maybe even Venus. Here is your energy. Okay, here is the challenge. Here is your person's energy. Here is the common ground or similarities between you both. And here is the possible outcome. Weird. Slash advice. Alrighty. So... Give me one, well, very rare, what's your life part, uh, path number? I just call it neighborhood watch. <laughs> Kayla, quit it. Who let the underage Tauruses in the live stream anyways, huh, Kayla? Just, just kidding, as uh, equally as you were kidding about that. I'm a triple Taurus, that's way too much Taurus. Snacks for everyone, though. Did you bring snacks for everyone, triple Taurus? Yeah, it's financial, is it? They said, big bet. Taurus Collective, let's get Rick up to 20K likes. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> like, 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 like. <laughs> the double tap. Boop, 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 boop. Any hoosers. No more root beer for you, Rick. Y'all, I do have five cards here on the tarot TikTok table. Here in about 20 minutes, give or take 19, 20 minutes, we will clarify with five more cards, one card per each placement within this reading. And in that time... We will recap for anyone joining us at that time, uh, especially any new Tauruses, uh, but it does not have to be a Taurus, per se. All right, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and or Rising, maybe even Venus. Why is the Three of Swords the first card being pulled for your reading? Do you feel heartbroken yourself? Um, was you possibly dealing with an Aries? as it was mentioned that the Aries and their person had this card and uh, the similarities or common ground between them both. Very well could be, but no matter which sign, no matter which sign you are dealing with, Taurus, this could be a 
temporary heartbreak. This could be that you are grieving something, maybe a small loss. Uh, it doesn't have to be a small loss. It definitely could be a big loss in your perception, you know, maybe that you receive it to be a big loss, like having this person leave your life, but they're still alive, but they're not in your environment. They're not giving you the attention you would like from them or that you liked getting from them necessarily. I don't know what kind of loss that you might be grieving. <clears throat> Um, this does tell me that this is a temporary heartbreak, though. This is something that you can heal from. You know, this isn't traumatic to whatever degree. Sure, maybe your ego is telling you, no, I've invested time, money, energy, effort into this person. That is where our ego comes into play. Yes, I've put all this time, money, energy, effort into this person, and I don't want them to leave, says our ego. Um, I won't get into that, but the three of swords is also an indication that it might be your negative, you know, thoughts, your negative thoughts affecting your heart space. Uh, it doesn't show in this card. We did have the other card clarifying the similarities and common ground for Aries and their person in the last reading. Uh, but in this card, the traditional artwork for the three of swords yes has a heart shaped shape a heart shaped shape a heart with three swords pierced almost to say that our ideas our thoughts our negative thoughts especially when they are piercing our heart space affecting our emotional space we are creating negative emotions and sending those out into the universe. We don't want to send those negative thoughts, those negative emotions into the universe. Therefore, um, I mean, we're doing it anyways when we grieve. And it's only human to go through grief. Yes. But at the same time, to some extent, we can turn off you know, those emotions. I'm not sure if that's healthy, per se. Um, but we can... Yes, keep our emotions on, except this time, let's uh, change how we think about it. You know, with the Three of Swords, we can choose to think about it in a different perspective. Maybe this person went on their own path so that I may be re redirected onto my correct path towards someone else that is more deserving of me, someone that is not so necessarily uh, feeding our ego, which is possibly why some of the, uh, the Tauruses are saying... No, I want them back. Maybe you do want to do over. Maybe that is coming from a place of ego or it's maybe coming from a place of intuition that you both are meant to be together. No matter the case, the Three of Swords is temporary. You will not feel this in six months. You will possibly laugh at this and or be grateful that you had this heartbreak. I promise you. With the Knight of Pentacles and the Challenge, Knight of Pentacles and the challenge. Are you finding it challenging to be patient with this person? Are you finding it challenging to take it slow and steady? Slow and steady does win the race. Are you finding it challenging to be cautious as to who and what you invest your time, money, energy, and effort into? Especially when it comes to this person? <clears throat> Knight of Pentacles in the challenge could be a very good indication of that. Um, so maybe you're either deciding with the Three of Swords to move move on, move elsewhere where your attention is either, uh, you know, more so focused on the positive or your thoughts are creating more a positive, you know, vibration in regards to what you're paying attention to especially when you're not in their, uh, this person's direction. It could be that you find it challenging to be patient with this person. Uh, to be, I don't know if it's loyal, per se. The Knight of Pentacles can be loyal. Maybe you do find it challenging to be loyal to this person um, to some degree. You know, I don't necessarily think that the Taurus would say, you know what, I'm finding it challenging to be loyal to you all of a sudden and to be patient, all because... I feel there's a loss or I'm having negative thoughts about this relationship. God forbid every time we have a negative thought about a relationship, 
you know, we just walk away. Uh, there would never be a relationship get off the ground if that was the case. Am I correct? We are so loyal, it's sick. Uh, to, to, a, uh, to a fault, am I correct? I do believe all earth signs can be loyal. No matter what sign you are, we all can be loyal. But like the earth signs specifically can be loyal and or like the most loyal, I do believe. Now, speaking of earth signs, we do have a page of pinnacles in this person's energy. You find it challenging to be a knight of pinnacles energy, which is, yes, slow progress, but it's progress nonetheless. You know, it's being patient and building upon a sturdy foundation. Um, a sturdy foundation. It's solid, you know, but do you find it challenging to invest in this because possibly this person is coming across as a page? Coming across as a page. Meaning, this person, to some degree, is inexperienced. It's like, how can you invest 100% of your energy when this person is still learning how to do that? Uh, this person is coming across as a beginner mindset, a student perspective, a Padawan learner for all the Jedi and or Star Wars fans out there. Sorry, I shouldn't speak about everyone. Um, why do you say that? You're saying you shouldn't speak for everyone? We stay too long. This is my ex. This is exactly what's happening. He wasn't loyal. That's a fact. We are so loyal, it's sick. Elizabeth said, yes, yes. Um, why am I thinking of Ducky? from Land Before Time. Yep, 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 yep. Y'all remember that uh, cartoon slash movie from the 90s? Yep, 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 yep. Ducky. Any Hoosers? Uh, we do have the Three of Cups. And the similarities are common ground. Are you putting each other in third-party situations? Is this person possibly uh, in a student and or a beginner's mindset when it comes to you as if maybe you have a lot of experience and they're like, oh, well, I need to uh, tone my experience down. You know, maybe this person has a lot of experience in a area of their life as well. But then when they are met, uh, met up with the tourists, they're like, oh, maybe it's uh, time that I sit down, be humble, you know? I'm not sure if this person is uh, always boastful about, yeah, I've got experience in this part of my life. I've traveled, you know, all over the state. The state. The state. And the Taurus is like, yeah, you wish. I've been all over the country. All over the world. And they're like, oh. But then you're like, well, wait. Something about this person is a little disappointing and or heartbreaking. Because maybe I have, maybe I had put them on a pedestal. Maybe, maybe the Taurus has put this person on a pedestal that was unrealistic. When we put others on a pedestal, <clears throat> it's super unrealistic, you know? It's, it's almost as if, wow, look at them all the way up here. But then here they are up down here saying, wait a second, I got to jump all the way up there to meet their expectations? Come on, Taurus, you know, and this, yeah, this person's like, okay, well, let me start all over as a beginner's mindset and try to find out how I can climb this ladder or create a ladder or, you know, build steps up to that expectation. It's like, well, this is heartbreaking. Now I got to look down at this person, says the Taurus. I got to look down at them and watch them try to, you know, build their way up to not only my expectation, but maybe even uh, work their way up to my level. Is this person not on your level, Taurus? I showed unconditional love. He, the Taurus, constantly found fault in everything I did. Oh my goodness. You just hit the nail on the head. On point. Littlefoot, my daughter loves that movie. <laughs> 
I just watching that movie on Saturday. Is that right? That's uh, pretty synchronistic. Yes, of course, Ducky, my fave. Saying all Taurus are so loyal. They can't do anything without myself, obviously, but not being humble. Hmm. Oh, they said watched, LOL. That's still pretty crazy. Um, only two days ago. Today's Monday. That was Saturday, you said. Um, and then here we are, the Taurus reading, and I mention it like, that is insane. That's insane! Uh, yeah, are you and this person now putting each other in third-party situations? Um, maybe you putting this person on a pedestal, and this person almost worried if the Taurus is even seeing them in the right light. Like, okay, um... Maybe this person is going to friends, family members, co-workers, asking for advice about you. Um, I don't want to feel like it's necessary them, what's the word, gossiping about you. It's more so they want their advice, their opinion. But then this person, if this person is so loyal to the Taurus, I'm not saying this person isn't loyal. Um, but if we have the Three of Cups... It could mean that they are going to friends, family members, co-workers, maybe even a neighbor for advice or their opinion about the Taurus. Maybe even the Taurus could be going to their friends, family members, co-workers, maybe even neighbors for advice or opinions about this person. No gossip. It's a smear campaign. Oh my goodness. Isn't that the same thing? Isn't gossip and smear campaigns the same thing? Can one argue that? Uh-oh. Goochie goochie goo. You said exactly. I see it at look at it from different perspectives. Is it prospectives or perspectives? You no, know you can gossip without it being a smear campaign. Okay. I get smeared constantly. I don't know if I like the way that sounded, but I'm going to allow it. I'm going to allow it. Uh, keep it PG-13, you freaks. Yeah, Taurus freaks. Um, with that being said, the Five of Cups. I thought the same thing. <laughs> uh -huh. I meant no. Uh, I meant no offense by that joke. I do hope. Uh, I meant all laughy faces. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I meant no offense to any of my sensitive Tauruses out there. I joke. I think if you're talking about someone and what they're doing to multiple people, it can be, though. They said, too funny. Okay, I'm glad you all have a sense of humor. Um, now, keep in mind, it could be that you both want to reunite with the Three of Cups. Keep in mind, it could be that you both want to, you know, either keep your options open or reunite. This could be a reconciliation uh, if this is the three of, uh, not three, if this is the three of cups, yes, the three, but three of cups, I, I was almost saying three of swords, but hey, we have the three of swords in your energy. We have the three of cups and the similarities are common ground. So there very well could be some sort of third party interference <clears throat> either on your end or their end. Um, but the possible outcome with the five of cups uh, being that you possibly might end up uh, in the energy of not really looking at the positive side of things, more so focused on the negative aspects of this relationship, maybe even, uh, you know, um, embarrassed, ashamed yourself. I did pull this card as the first card for the Aries reading, the last reading I did. Um, so yeah, maybe that interpretation could be true for you. That maybe you, you know, feel like this. there is a loss, especially with the Three of Swords in your, uh, the first card of this reading in your energy. Um, maybe you are focused on what's been lost in this, but there is still love between you both. There is still love between you both. There is still love between you and friends, family members, coworkers. You have friends, family members, coworkers that still love you. You still have blessings. You still have things to be grateful for. Clothes on your back, on your... You know, feet, food in your stomach, a roof over your head. You know, you're needing to be reminded that, hey, not all is lost. This too shall pass. 
Even if you and this person aren't meant to be together, you still have the breath of life that is a gift. All right? Um, we're going to get a deeper look into this reading, y'all. Why is it that maybe the Taurus is heartbroken? Let's get a deeper look into that. Clarify. Why is it that you find it challenging to maybe be patient on this person to, uh, to be in a beginner's mindset and or learn how they can serve and or love you as unconditionally as you are loving them? I do want to be careful with how many times you throw that word around though, Taurus's unconditional love. You should only have unconditional love for your kids or your parents you know, and when we are dealing with a spouse, I need to uh, have the condition that yes, I will love you, but I need you to, you know, help raise my kids or keep the house tidy while I'm at work. And then you will have the condition that yes, I bring in the money, bring in the bread, you know, uh, maybe there's some sort of rules around discipline or lack of discipline or whatever, you know, your answer is there. Um, no matter the case, it kind of has to be conditional when it, when we're talking about romantic love, you know, so maybe we will get a deeper look into maybe why is the challenge that you either find it challenging to be loyal, especially if the three of cups is here and the similarities or this person, you know, finds it challenging to be loyal. This could be both your challenge, mind you. Uh, let's get a deeper look into Maybe why you find it challenging to invest slowly but surely into this relationship. Um, we're getting a deeper look into possibly why is this person looking at you with a new perspective or reevaluating their own worth, their own value. Blaze Baby said, I find it challenging to stay interested. And this Taurus reading says, My moderator. This reading is a yawn. Let's move on to the Gemini reading tomorrow night. No, JK. This Taurus reading is a yawn, says my moderator. JK. Because it's my husband. Blaze Baby said, nah. <laughs> Left my ass off. Bye. <laughs> Y'all are great. Any Hoosers? Yes, Kayla. A new Aries. Okay. Uh, maybe you find it... Um, or maybe you find it. Yeah, why is it that this person is needing to have a beginner's mindset with you or in the way that they view themselves? That they view themselves. Are they feeling a little insecure when it comes to the Taurus? Is the Taurus having unrealistic expectations on them? Um, or seeing this person, you know, in the right perception? Is this relationship even realistic in general, if that's the case, you know, because if there's a unrealistic dynamic between you both, then are you both in like la la land, you know, and uh, daydreaming about this, like one day it could be very practical and grounded, but at the same time, how can we build off of something that isn't so stable or that you yourself find it challenging to be patient with, you know, or to be slow and steady wins the race with this relationship? We'll get a deeper look into this Three of Cups energy. Uh, meaning maybe you both are, yeah, keeping your options open and or wanting to be more social and or break out of your shell to some degree. Uh, and last but not least, why is it that maybe the possible outcome with the Five of Cups is the Taurus um, possibly keeping their attention and or their focus on the more so negative aspects of this relationship. Are you feeling embarrassed yourself? Are you feeling ashamed about investing in this person or at least attempting to, no matter how challenging it is to keep it slow and steady weighing the race? Lettuce. Yes, lettuce. The main ingredient for every salad. Lettuce. Get a deeper look into this Taurus reading, shall we? I think we shall. I think we shall. Alrighty. If y'all are new here, Taurus, definitely hit that uh, follow button. It's greatly appreciated. We both were damaged and unhealed. It bled into our relationship. That, that definitely could be. 
We're going to de get a deeper look, though. Oh, no. Kayla. Kayla, come back. Uh, I will be posting this live stream to YouTube, Kayla. So do keep that in mind. You can come back uh, to my YouTube channel and either subscribe if you haven't done so. Five more minutes? Okay. Um, I mean, I I'll probably be doing a lot uh, after the five minutes. But yeah, do keep in mind, if you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, go ahead and do that now. What's RGW name of... Oh, YouTube. What's the name of the YouTube? That is uh, Free Will Tarot. Same logo, same title. Uh, Free Will Tarot. The link to my YouTube channel is in my TikTok bio. Keep that in mind. All right, Kayla. I hope that helped. Uh, and for any tourists out there that... For some reason, for whatever reason, you know, it is acceptable. And you all have free will to not necessarily stay in this reading, especially knowing that I have a YouTube channel. The link to my YouTube channel is in my TikTok bio. Alrighty. Um, I have tons of people every week say, hey, I missed out on the Taurus reading. I missed out on the Aries reading or Gemini or Cancer or Leo. No matter the zodiac sign, I have tons of people all the time, every week, every day, say that, hey, I missed out on this reading. But no worries. Do not worry. I upload these live streams to TikTok every afternoon. All right, so you will definitely see this live stream tomorrow night. With that being said, maybe y'all want to hit the share button. If you have a Taurus or whatever zodiac sign in your life that wants to watch this reading, maybe you are connected with a Taurus that has TikTok, the TikTok app. I have many third parties right now involved. Well, I suppose it could be, a, it, and I'll put it this way. It never works out um, if you keep more than one option on the back burner. It never works out in your favor. I'll, I'll put it that way. You know, almost as if <clears throat> when I myself came on to TikTok, I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't have a, a backup plan. Um, do you think it would have worked out if uh, I had a backup plan, you know, for doing readings here on TikTok? Possibly. Possibly. The world may never know, though. I think I was meant to not have a backup plan, to have a plan on the back burner. Like, what if this fails? Well, what if it works? What if it works out in your favor, you know? Why have a backup plan or have uh, another person on the back burner or a side piece when you could just see how it happens, how it goes, you know, how successful it will end up with one person? Uh, that is my argument to having multiple options that is my opinion that's only opinion though that's all it has to be all right not judging i've definitely been there and enjoyed the ego trip you know once upon a time but neither here nor there i have to get this reading clarified for you tauruses and also one more time taurus I did uh, start up my personal readings last Sunday, uh, being last night. So keep that in mind. If you want a personal reading or a chance to volunteer for one of the 11 spots coming up this next Sunday, be sure to join me this Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's important. Uh, that would be, what, an hour and a half ago. Doesn't make sense to Taurus planning, lol. <laughs> I, I feel it. But yes, if you want a personal reading, $20 per personal or $5 per yes or no question, do set the alarm for this Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, that's a terrible bridge shuffle. I'm going to redo that. I do think I have mentioned everything that I need to promote. For anyone new here, that was the bridge shuffle. Go ahead and send me scissors or anything sharp and pointy so I can cut this deck. And I have to get right on into the clarifying. I cannot waste any more time. I don't feel like I've wasted time, per se. 
Um, I think everything I've said in this live stream needed to be said, whether it was the messages from the cards and or promoting myself or just being entertaining and talking about, you know, Ducky from Lord of the, uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, Ducky from Lord of the Rings. Where's my head out? I love Lord of the Rings, but uh, whatever. Yes, Ducky from Lord of the Rings. Yep, yep, yep. We're going to throw that ring over the, the cliff there into the mountain. Yep, yep, yep. Saruman is waiting with his uh, one evil eye. Yep, yep, yep. I'm just picturing Ducky in Lord of the Rings now. <laughs> right? Same. I've been, I've been watching or been wanting to watch Lord of the Rings. I, I could have swore my sister had it, but I guess she doesn't. Neither here nor there. Thank you all for... Uh, yep, yep, yep. Um, for interacting with me in the comments. Much appreciated. One more time, hit that follow button if you haven't done so. Hit that like button if you like the energy I bring to the Terra TikTok table. It's the best movies of all time. I agree. I share Facebook memes. Uh, that are all based off of and or associated with Lord of the Rings, like, all the freaking time. I love them. Uh, any hoosers? Yes, YouTube channel link is in my TikTok bio. Check it out if you get a chance, because I don't want y'all to miss out on a live stream. And, yeah, follow, like, uh, maybe subscribe. That is a option as well. Uh, share as well, though, this live stream. Here we go. We're going to clarify... The Three of Swords in your energy, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and or Rising, maybe even Venus, clarifying the Knight of Pentacles <clears throat> uh, in the challenge, clarifying the Page of Pentacles in this person's energy, weird, clarifying the Three of Cups, even weirder, and the similarities or common ground between you both, and clarifying the Five of Cups in the possible outcome and or advice. This is a strange reading. Hey, Lindsay, what up? Is that the same Lindsay from last night? Or was that a different Lindsay? I'm not sure if the, the Lindsay from last night had a coffee cup or what the case. They said, it's me. Okay, cool, cool. Welcome back. All right, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and or Rising. Maybe even Venus. We are clarifying as we go. They said, your readings are so on point. I do appreciate you. I appreciate the compliment. And yeah, we're, we're going to uh, recap and clarify. So it could be three of swords that you are pretty disappointed in yourself or disappointed in this person. It could be a temporary heartbreak that you are feeling. I say temporary because anytime I see the three of swords, I tell myself, wow, at least it's not the Ten of Swords, feeling betrayed, feeling backstabbed by someone we trust and love the most. Um, I don't feel like it's that bad. Yes, it's pretty bad, being in Three of Swords energy, being heartbroken, feeling rejected, feeling outcasted. Um, but it's only, yeah, it's only, Rick, it's only our negative thoughts affecting our heart space and or... Um, trying to sink the boat, trying to um, get the boat to sink, let's say. I don't know what I was trying to... Wobble the boat? Yeah, maybe that's the, uh, the words I was trying to say. Our negative thoughts, trying to wobble the boat for our emotional space, trying to create uh, dissonance, let's say, in our manifestations. Shake the boat. Yes, thank you, Carrie. Um, <coughs> three of Swords, though. This is a temporary heartbreak, I do feel, because in the next six months, I do feel like you, yeah, rock the boat. Yes, thank you. Rock the boat. Goodness gracious. Uh, can you all smell my brain fart? No? Thank goodness. It probably smells like root beer. Any hoosers. <laughs> Three of swords. Three of swords. Tells me. He said, I have the same one. Um... What, the same root beer or the, the same uh, brain fart? Is it possible to share a uh, mutual brain fart? 
simultaneously. That's intense. Any hoosers. Uh, yeah, me thinking out loud. That's a scary thought. No pun intended. Any hoosers. Three of swords. This could be, yeah, that you feel a... <laughs> they said jinx. I already have a soda. I got me a root beer, so uh, no jinx needed. Because I said shake the boat first and it's rock the boat. Oh, gotcha. Well, neither here nor there. Any hoosers? Yes, this is a temporary heartbreak because in the next six months, I do feel like you will be maybe not necessarily fully healed from this, uh, from this situation, from this person, but at least better healed, feeling better, healed to an extent where you possibly could laugh at the situation. Like, hey, I'm glad I learned, you know, that I was supposed to be redirected towards a different person, possibly, or me and this person were meant to be redirected, you know, um, in the sense of our attention, not so focused on the negative aspects, but on the positive, you know, we have a problem here. I'm feeling this loss. I'm feeling heartbroken. Okay, well, that's definitely feeling... Uh, that's definitely putting our focus on the problem, which is only manifesting more of the problem. How can we manifest a solution? Um, Ace of Coins. And try to plant a seed of inst or instability. Of stability. I mean, I suppose we did have instability... Uh, for the number five, which we did roll for the dice in your uh, in the beginning of this reading, <clears throat> I don't know if this is uh, someone you either live with or had made plans to live with, and or are building a foundation, you know, towards a fa uh, a relationship. But it could tell me that you are feeling heartbroken because of a seed you planted, a seed of long term longevity. A seed for your future. Maybe this was a financial seed. Maybe this was a, a new financial opportunity or the potential for it as uh, all aces. Yes, um, I learned in the last month a new interpretation of the ace of pinnacles, which is that it is the slowest new start. It is the slowest new start because it takes the longest to uh, blossom, to grow into something beautiful and, uh, you know, to grow into fruition. Fruition. I'm not sure if I said that right, but neither here nor there. We lived together two years together. Four years total, 17 months. Oh, I like that. Why, thank you. Yes, I liked it as well. Um, we do have the Knight of Pentacles and the challenge then. Telling me that it might feel challenging for the Taurus to either be patient with this person or... For the Taurus in general to invest in this person slowly but surely wins the race. Do you find it challenging, Taurus, to be cautious when you invest your time, money, energy, effort into this person? Are you kind of reckless when it comes to your investment into this person? I don't know if reckless is the word I want to use, but when you find it challenging to be patient... What is the opposite of being patient? It's either being reckless and or being uh, impulsive. That's the word. I don't want to say you, I don't want to say that you're going the opposite extreme. It could be that you're you know somewhere in the gray area. Like eh, I find it challenging to invest my money, time, energy, effort into this person. I I find it challenging to be patient with them while they, you know, create their own value or worth or reevaluate what they bring to the table, uh, possibly because you yourself aren't financially stable or finding it challenging to become independent. Are you finding it challenging? Or here's another the side eye, yeah. It could be uh, with the Knight of Pentacles to the Nine of Pentacles. Let me say that again. The Knight with a T at the end. To the Nine with the N-E at the end. Knight of Pentacles to the Nine, the number Nine of Pentacles. And the challenge. 
Meaning, you might find it challenging to either be patient, to either be loyal, to invest your time, money, energy, and effort into this person slowly but surely, or to be cautious in general with how much you invest in this person, time, money, energy, effort, right, all the above. Possibly because they themselves are codependent upon either someone else's money or your money or you are uh, needing to be more independent and not so codependent on someone else's money, stability, uh, not needing to be uh, you know, so reliant on someone else's stability and or money. Yes, my patience is thin. Oh, I believe it. I'm not sure which example is going to resonate. Either you find it challenging to be patient on this person to gain independence, or you find it challenging to be patient with this person, possibly because you aren't creating your own independence. Is that why you attracted this person or how you attracted this person into your life? You know, when we attract people into our life, it's mostly because... Um, there's a snapshot that some of the moon cycles take of our energy. And at that time of the snapshot, whatever energy we are in or energy we are lacking, that is what we attract and other people. So it could be that you've attracted this person into your environment at a time when you yourself weren't so stable or independent or financially stable to some degree trying to create my own way. There you go. I had a lot of money. He was struggling when he met me. Okay. I must move on to the next placement. I only have a little bit of time left before I have to end the reading. But in this person's energy, we do have the Page of Pentacles telling me that uh, they are looking at you in a new pair of eyes. I don't think they ever looked at you in a pair of rose glass colored eyes. Rose-colored eyes, rose-colored glasses, that's it, rose-colored glasses, whatever the case. They're looking at you with a new perspective. They're trying to reevaluate uh, if what they bring to the table, if what they bring uh, as far as worth, value, measures up to what you bring to the table. Meaning, are you putting unrealistic expectations on this person? Meaning, are you putting them on a pedestal to some degree and expecting them to perform at such a level that they can't reach unless they start out in this page of pentacles energy you know and having to start all over again and recreate something or reevaluate their own worth their own value what they bring to the table um i do feel like this person wants to have a serious conversation with you with the king of swords i don't know what about it could be about how, yes, you are putting them in unrealistic expectations or putting them on a pedestal, you know, which is causing unrealistic expectations. No matter the case, when we have expectations on someone, we, yeah, are definitely going to be disappointed. Your primary energy being three of swords. It makes sense to me now. Yes, we need to talk. Uh, I do feel like this person does want to talk, but it's going to be uh, logic over emotions. Head over heart. Logic over emotions. Um, yeah, this person doesn't want to sugarcoat things. This person doesn't want to beat around the bush, per se. Um, they want to have a serious talk. I'm not sure if they know all the facts. I'm not sure if they know all the truth, but the King of Swords could be just that. Otherwise, if it was the Queen of Swords, she would be willing to give the benefit of the doubt, but then cut you out right afterwards if you were trying to manipulate them or lie or deceit or you know be deceptive, I should say, um, or bring any toxic behavior their way. You know what I'm saying? They need to initiate it, okay? Well... Definitely could be with the King of Swords that they're about to. Like, hey, masculine energy, I'm going to take action. I know the truth. I'm going to be as a matter of fact towards the Taurus. So uh, be aware that this person definitely could be in a as a matter of fact. You know, let me get to clapping and that type of attitude. Like Taurus being like, oh, what, what do we have here? Did you bring snacks with the, you know, 
that attitude. I sure hope you brought snacks to this conversation because I'm going to need some popcorn, you know, for this person to be all page of pentacles and a beginner's mindset, reevaluating their worth, their value, but then wanting to have a serious conversation. This is kind of cute. This person is kind of cute, you know? It's almost like a toddler coming up to you and trying to tell you what's up. I might be reevaluating my worth, my value, but let me tell you something about yourself, Taurus. Aw, you cute little page of pinnacles wanting to have a, a serious talk with me. I hope you brought some snacks, because I'm going to love the popcorn while you're just, you know, talking. I don't mean to be insensitive towards this person, but it's a funny uh, pairing between the page of pinnacles and king of swords, you gotta admit. Uh, with the Three of Cups and the common ground or similarities between you both. They said, you're hilarious. Thank you so much. Um, three of Cups. I don't know if you are wanting to reunite with this person or if you both are wanting to break out of your shell with each other, possibly, you know, and be more social with each other, possibly. But I find it hilarious that we have the Three of Swords once again in the same placement as Aries reading. Yeah, we had the Three of Swords in the same placement. Right here, clarifying the common ground and or similarities. So yeah, there could be a third party interference. And or there could be, uh, you know, in the romantic sense, sure. That's worst case scenario, sure. Uh, best case scenario, this person and or you are going to other folks, fam uh, friends, family members, co-workers, and asking for their advice, for their opinion on you, Taurus, but then you asking others for their advice and opinions on this person. You know, the the cute little page of pinnacles and their, their tough attitude, wanting to have a logical of her heart, you know, type of... I, I'll, I'll get out of here with that. But yeah, 3-3. Three, three. Three of Cups, Three of Swords. This could scream of third-party interference, whether it's romantic or it's platonic. It doesn't matter. It's third-party situation. It's third-party interference, you know. The only opinions we should care about is the other person that we love. We're not going to take our family members into the bed at the end of the night. We shouldn't care about their opinions that much. Yes, we should respect their opinions and, you know, take, listen, and respectfully, you know, take it in and hear them out. But like I said, we don't have to take them to bed at the end of the day. We don't have to, you know, take our friends to bed at the end of the day, our coworkers. We don't uh, crap where we eat, you know. That's the uh, coworkers taking into bed. So... Yeah, this person should have to go straight to the Taurus. You, Taurus, should have to go to this Page of Pentacles, King of Swords, individual, uh, for your opinions, for your advice, for their opinions, for their advice, vice versa, right? No matter the third-party situation, I don't care if they are going to your family, uh, family members, I don't care if you are going to their family members or their friends or, you know, your friends, your own family members, whatever, you know, third party is third party is third party. I'm going I'm to put that out there. Yeah, because everyone else is going to have their own opinion. And for all we know, these three swords put in your heart space and their heart space are all put there from the negative thoughts that were created from our family members, their family members, our friends, their friends, our co-workers, their co-workers, you know, that just want you and the Taurus to split up. That could be if you and this person are going to other folks for advice. Um, now, if you are going to me for advice, per se, we do have the Five of Cups. We do have the Five of Cups in your advice slash possible outcome. Meaning, yeah, maybe you are ashamed by either letting this person go to third party, you know, opinions or advice, or maybe you're ashamed of yourself going to either your friends or family members for advice or this person's friends or family members for advice. I'm sure some of you possibly could be doing that. 
or you're just looking at the negative aspects of this relationship and you're like, ah, this is so annoying. I wish we could just get our crap together and just move forward. Why not? Why can't we? Why can't we with the Six of Cups? I like this as a progression. Five of Cups to the Six of Cups. Why can't we just reunite? Be emotionally familiar with each other as we always have felt. And just get along. And just love each other. You know? Maybe even gift each other. Or maybe this person should gift you something for an early birthday present. That is what? Uh, three months from now? About three months from now? Early birthday present? Neither here nor there. They said yes, please. Mwah! Five of Cups to the Six of Cups. I do feel like if this is the possible outcome, this is positive. This is good news, at least for the next week. At least for the next week. Five to the Six of Cups. Yes, things might look a little negative. You might be uh, crying over spilled milk at this time, maybe for the next week. But by the end of the week, possibly, things will look better. I do feel like this is confirmation. Six of Cups. They said, okay, just a bump, lol. <laughs> what? Six of Cups. Yeah, that's a reconciliation. Re reconciliation. Reconciling differences. Uh, reuniting. No matter how challenging it is to be loyal or be patient on them, you know, I do feel like it will work out in your favor if you are just a little bit more patient, okay? Uh, we don't have the hanged man in this reading, but do try to put yourself in this person's shoes, Taurus. I do feel like that would be beneficial towards you or for you, per se. All right, y'all. I've got about two or three minutes left of this live stream, and I have to end it. I do hope this helped and or you found this insightful, helpful, for sure. Um, maybe entertaining. As much root beer as I've drank, for sure. Uh, maybe it'll happen tomorrow night as well that I drink a bunch of root beer. I highly doubt it, but possible. I was thinking about reaching out, but I'll be patient. Thank you. Yeah, because this person definitely could want to have a serious conversation with you. With that being said, y'all, hit that follow button if you haven't done so. Hit the like button a few more times. Link to my YouTube channel is in my TikTok account. Hold and click so you can copy and paste where you need to. And keep in mind, I will be offering personal readings this Sunday. Hope to see you all there. Uh, have a good night, though. Take care, and I hope to see you all tomorrow night for the Gemini and Cancer readings. Have a good night. Take care, y'all. Much love.